With every single season of Power Rangers making significant changes, including changing the main characters, year after year there are very few constants. But one thing that we can almost always guarantee is there will be some sort of comedic character or duo to lighten the mood, to stir up the plot somewhat. The comedy relief characters that have featured throughout the show have always been received with varying levels of enthusiasm, but at least in my opinion, that is mainly down to the fact that they can never quite meet the standards set by the original, iconic comedy duo, Bulk and Skull, appearing in every season from the first season of Mighty Morphin all the way up to Lost Galaxy makes them the two longest consecutively appearing characters in the history of the program, telling you just how popular and loved these two are. But what exactly happened to them? Let's find out. Bulk and Skull first met in the maternity ward at the hospital where they were born. Every time Bulk cried, Skull cried too, and because of the noise they were isolated from all the other babies. The two have been constant companions ever since. Bulk and Skull probably attended the same elementary school as the kids who would later become the Power Rangers. Before the events of that happened in the first season, it was revealed that they became best friends after the incident where Bulk decided not to beat up Skull for shoving a popsicle down his shirt. Bulk and Skull started out as your typical high school bullies. They normally had something to do with what would be considered the subplot for an episode. Their motivations for their actions were usually based around greed or ego, and the outcome of their schemes almost always ended in them being humiliated in some way or another. The pair would often get themselves mixed up in the villain's schemes. In the episode Green with Evil Part 4, Bulk and Skull are trying to escape in an abandoned bus when they are captured by a giant Goldar. However, just as the Putty Patrollers are about to push the bus Bulk and Skull are in off a cliff, the Power Rangers form the original Megazord and help Bulk and Skull to safety before engaging in a fierce battle against Goldar, Scorpina and a giant Green Ranger. They soon made attempts to discover the identities of the Power Rangers and repeatedly failed. Ironically, they did actually succeed in finding out the identities of the Rangers, but before long their short-term memories were erased and they forgot all about it. Eventually, Bulk and Skull joined the Angel Grove Junior Police Force where they met Lieutenant Stone. Lieutenant Stone became a permanent character himself, frequently giving Bulk and Skull orders that they failed to perform, leading, eventually, to his inevitable anger. Despite this, Bulk and Skull took their new job very seriously and were quite close to the new character, Lieutenant Stone. Moving into the events of Power Rangers Zeo, Bulk and Skull remained members of the Junior Police Force. At one point, Bulk fell for the police chief's daughter and sought Tanya's advice on romance since he had no experience in that department himself. His attempts aggravated the chief to the point of getting Lieutenant Stone fired from the force. Bulk and Skull then went on to quit the department themselves as a show of loyalty to Stone. Now working as private detectives, Bulk and Skull did what they could to assist Stone in solving cases no matter how small. When it came to passing their detective test, however, they both failed miserably, but were given passing grades for braving a monster attack to continue their test. They eventually walked out on the agency to take an undercover mission in Paris, the details of which have never been disclosed. Also at a point during Zeo, Bulk and Skull secretly hosted Rito and Goldar, characters who lost their memories after the attack at the end of Mighty Morphin. This came to an end when the duo regained their memories and left, stealing Bulk and Skull's motorcycle in the process. At the start of Power Rangers Turbo, the gap between Power Rangers Turbo the movie and the season opener revealed that Bulk and Skull had returned from France and reconciled with Stone. All three eventually got the chance to rejoin the police force before Lieutenant Stone went to replace Ernie as owner of the gym and juice bar. Unfortunately, before they could get back to work, they were transformed into chimpanzees, which marked the permanent end to Bulk and Skull's police career. Bulk and Skull remain chimpanzees for several episodes. They are voiced by the actors who play Bulk and Skull, however, only the audience can understand them. Stone takes the chimpanzees into his care, and they make several attempts to inform him of their true identities. The behind the scenes reason for this is actually quite interesting. Saban had tried pitching a spin-off show starring Bulk and Skull called The Good, The Bad and The Stupid. It never actually got picked up, but while the actors were off filming the pilot for the series, the writers turned their characters into chimps to cover the fact that they were missing. 
Anyway, they were eventually transformed back into humans, but a temporary side effect rendered them invisible. This state only lasted for a few episodes before they were finally returned to normal and attempted to take on proper jobs. During Power Rangers in Space, Jerome Stone also left the series without any explanation and Bulk and Skull finally found permanent jobs helping the rather loony Professor Phenomenus locate and capture extraterrestrial life. During this, the three were captured by Astronomer's Data Scammer Monster and later transformed into Data Cards, but were soon restored to normal and returned to Earth. The best transformation and growth of Bulk and Skull's character is shown in the climax of this season, Countdown to Destruction. Towards the end of that episode, Astronomer's forces have conquered Earth. Then later that night, when the citizens were doubting the arrival of the Power Rangers, thinking that they had been abandoned, Bulk reassured them that the Rangers had never let them down before and that everyone should have faith in them. The following morning, Astronomer returns and asks the rounded up citizens of Angel Grove where the Rangers are getting no response, so she prepares to destroy the Earth. Before she is about to do so, Bulk, Skull and Professor Phenomenus, and then eventually all of the citizens, pretend to be the Rangers to buy the real team some time. I am the Blue Ranger! A minute or so later, when Astronomer does not buy the ruse, the real Ranger teams show up, and break in with tradition, they morph in front of everyone, showing their identities to the world. Them? They begin to fight the hundreds of Quantrons in the area, and a huge battle ensues. At this point, Bolt cannot stand to see the Rangers he adores so much against these terrible odds, so he leads the citizens of Angel Grove in a fight for their city, and everyone joins in fighting the monsters alongside the Rangers. The cry for everyone to get in there to fight alongside the Rangers is widely seen as the finest hour for Bulk and Skull's characters. Then a year later, Bulk and Professor Phenomenus board the space station Terra Venture for its interstellar journey into a new world. In order to finally get away from all the monster attacks and alien attacks in Angel Grove, Skull, however, did not wake up in time and was left behind. Then during the Power Rangers Wild Force episode Forever Red, Bulk and Skull made a special cameo appearance, although it's not explained how Bulk got back from Miranoi. They were later then shown as servers and managers of a tropical themed bar called Bulk Myers. In this episode, Bulk and Skull are shown playing Psycho Ranger chess while having a conversation about the early days of the Power Rangers. Bulk is actually bragging to Skull about how he once saw Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa, which is kind of ironic because Skull was there too. <laughs> In Power Rangers Samurai and Super Samurai, it's revealed that Skull has a 15-year-old son named Spike Skullovich, whom he leaves in the care of Bulk. Skull is mentioned throughout both seasons, but does not appear until the final episode, Samurai Forever, when he appears in person to pick up his son, in turn reuniting him with his best friend Bulk before heading back home. Nothing else is really known about the duo after this point, but hopefully you guys have learned a fair amount about the journey and the life of Bulk and Skull from this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. May the power protect you and I will see you next time on The Sixth Ranger.